Hey you guys, what's up? In today's video, I'm gonna be trying out the brand new Clinique Even Better Serum Foundation. We have a lot to talk about with this foundation. There is some tea to spill because this has caused some major controversy. So we're gonna be jumping into that all later on in this video. So yeah, I hope you guys are all excited about today's video. If you are, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So as I said, today I'm gonna to be testing out the brand new Clinique foundation. This is the Even Better Serum Foundation. This is supposed to have like skincare benefits as well. This is a pretty pricey foundation and honestly, Honestly, I was not going to review it after I heard about all of the drama about it because whenever I first saw that this foundation came out, I just saw it on like Ulta's website and I just saw the little bottle. And so I placed an order and I was like, oh, I'm excited to try out a new foundation for you guys. Then I saw Trend Moods post with like, I can't remember if it was arm swatches or it was something showing the entire shade range. Now keep in mind that this is a foundation that has 42 shades and the shade range is literally like light, 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 light. Like there is nothing else. Maybe like a few medium and then there are like no deep shades of this foundation. I wanna say there's probably like two and I can't believe that we are in 2021 and brands are still not doing shade ranges that cater to all skin tones. Like I, I didn't wanna do this video because I was worried about what you guys were gonna think. Why am I reviewing a product that is having a shade range like this? But I had already ordered it and I was like, you know what? I feel like it is my job to come on here and tell you guys that hey, it's not okay that a brand is doing a shade range that does not include everybody. And I still wanted to test out the product for you guys because I did order it and I spent a lot of money on this foundation so I wanted to try it out for you guys so yeah there is the tea with the foundation just know that this foundation has 42 shades but they definitely do not fit everyone like there are not enough deep shades in this foundation it's pretty much just all like light shades of foundation and I I can't believe it this is reminding me of like the whole beauty blender bounce foundation drama that was ridiculous at the time as well. I never bought that foundation. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into like some close-ups of the product. I'm gonna tell you guys the price. I'm gonna show you guys some swatches of this foundation compared to some of my other foundations. So if you are a similar shade to me, you can kind of see which other foundations my shade is that I purchased in this foundation compared to like other shades from other brands. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with that. So this is the Clinique Even Better Clinical Serum Foundation with Broad Spectrum SPF 25. The price is $42. It says that it has three serum technologies. It's oil-free. The formula includes hyaluronic acid, salicylic acid, and vitamin C to leave bare skin looking even better. It is a medium to full coverage with a satin finish, 24-hour wear that helps visibly improve skin instantly and over time. So the bottle is very futuristic looking to me it almost looks like a pill I do think it's kind of funky but it is interesting that's for sure so I picked up the shade CN10 alabaster and here's what it looks like I'm going to swatch this next to some of my other foundation shades so you guys can kind of see where this shade is compared to some other shades from other brands so there is the Clinique foundation in the shade alabaster next we have Estee Lauder double wear in the shade two in one desert beige next we have the ColourPop pretty fresh foundation in the shade fair 30 in the ColourPop one does oxidize a little bit so I am expecting it to be a little bit closer to the Clinique one but I also have the ColourPop foundation in the shade light 45w next we have the it cosmetics your skin but better foundation in the shade light neutral 22 so far i feel like that one seems to be the closest to the clinique one next is urban decay stay naked in 30 in in pure cosmetics four in one love your selfie foundation in the shade ln5 huda beauty faux filter in the shade shortbread i'm running out of room over here L Flawless Satin Finish Foundation in the shade Natural. And lastly, I wanted to include the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream in the shade Fair. Okay, so here is the Clinique Foundation compared to all of these other foundations. It is a little bit darker than I was expecting because I thought I got a light shade, but yeah, let's go ahead and try it out on the face. So I have gone ahead and prepped my skin for the foundation. All I have is like clean skin with a little bit of moisturizer because that's just what I would normally do on an everyday basis. I don't prime on an everyday basis, so I'm not gonna do that today. And I really wanna see how the foundation does itself without a primer underneath. So I'm just gonna pump a little bit onto a sponge. I feel like the shade's not gonna match me because I'm not tan right now and I just feel like shades never match me for some reason. But actually, that doesn't look too bad. Hopefully it doesn't oxidize. 
I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit closer so you can see how this is blending. It actually looks really good so far. Moment of truth, can it cover these blemishes? By the way, this is the e.l.f. blending sponge. It is like my favorite beauty sponge right now. It's so good. The shade actually looks a lot better than I thought it was going to. Also, it blends out very, very easily. And I feel like my skin looks like really smooth. I can't believe that it pretty much covered these blemishes down here. Like those were pretty bad. Oh my gosh. So looking at myself up close, like it really does look very nice. This is the kind of foundation that I like. Like I'm not super into like super full coverage foundations. I like more of a medium coverage foundation that covers what it needs to, but looks more natural on the skin. I don't like having a super like cakey face and I'm gonna be wearing this all day. So I'm glad that it does not look cakey because that's what I was kind of worried about. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of my makeup and then I'm gonna come back and give you guys my thoughts on how I think the foundation looks once everything is pretty much done. And then we need to get into like the wear test and all of that fun stuff. And I'm gonna be wearing a mask today, so I'm really curious how this is gonna be holding up against a mask. It is very hard to keep your foundation on when you're wearing a mask. And it says it's a 24 hour foundation, so we're gonna see how it does. So let me go ahead and go do that and I will be right back. All right, so here is my makeup complete. I went with a simple look, at least it's simple for me because I don't wanna wear false lashes or any kind of crazy makeup because I have a lot of stuff that I need to do today. If you guys are wondering, I am wearing the new Natasha Denona Mini Love Palette on my eyes and then I have a little bit of the Too Faced Be My Lover on my eyes as well. And I'm gonna have a review up on this palette very soon, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But honestly, you guys, I can't believe that I'm saying this because I like almost don't want to like the foundation because I feel like it's so ridiculous with the whole shade range thing, but it looks really good. Like I just don't understand how we are in 2021 and there are brands that are still not doing a shade range that fits everyone. Like why are there 42 shades in this foundation, but then there's like two deep shades. That makes no sense at all. And I feel bad even sitting here saying that it looks amazing because honestly right now it looks really good because not all of you guys are gonna be able to find your shade in this foundation and I think that's so sad. So my initial just like first impressions looking at my makeup done completely. The foundation looks very smooth. I don't feel like it's gonna go anywhere. I will say though that you definitely need to set it in place with powder because after I applied the foundation and then kind of tapped my face, I did feel like it was gonna kind of transfer or move off if I didn't set it. So I did set everything in place and now I do not feel like it's gonna go anywhere. I feel like I can touch my face and it's not gonna come off on my fingers. Like there's a tiny bit on my fingers, but it's nothing too crazy. Like if I touch like this, I don't feel like there's that much makeup on my fingers or anything. I feel like I got more highlight off my face than anything. By the way, I am wearing the new Anastasia Iced Out Highlighter. I do have a review on that as well on my channel. I'll have it in the cards or something if you guys wanna check that out. But yeah, based on my first impressions, the foundation looks really good and I feel bad saying that. I don't know, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you guys think that it looks good? I'm pretty impressed. This is like my favorite kind of foundation that's like a medium coverage, kind of satin skin-like finish. It's not sinking into my smile lines, thank goodness, because a lot of foundations sink into my lines. It looks very smooth on my forehead. I love the way it covered up my blemishes. This is gonna be a tricky review because the product itself is really good, but the shade range is, I can't even with that. All right, so I have some stuff that I need to go do today. So I'm gonna come back in and check in with you guys later. I'll probably wear like a black mask or something so that you guys can see if the makeup transfers. I know this lipstick is gonna be all over that mask, so kind of nervous about it. But yeah, I'll be back in a little bit to give you guys an update. And we are back. My camera like doesn't know how to focus on me with this mask on and I'm really scared to take it off. I just got back home. We're gonna see what this makeup is looking like with this mask off. Okay, so here's the mask. There obviously is like a little bit of foundation on it and 
my lipstick is on there as well, but girl, Natasha Denona, that lipstick stayed on pretty dang good in a mask. I can't believe that, honestly. Here's a close-up of the mask. All right, I'm coming up close. So normally, like whenever I do my makeup under a mask, like it starts to do like lines here and let's look up close. Okay, so biggest issue right now with the foundation is the nose area. I have a pretty long nose, so it really goes against the mask and the foundation did move on the nose. So it is looking a little rough on my nose, not gonna lie, but I'm pretty impressed with like the cheek area and underneath like not the under eye, but like right here normally starts to come off and it hasn't yet. And girl, this Anastasia highlight is still there as well. So yeah, the only problem right now is right here on the nose. It, yeah, it's looking a little rough right here on the nose. So it did start to come off, which always happens to me with masks on. I don't even know if it's possible to keep your makeup on with a mask. I don't think I've personally found a mask proof foundation and I don't think that this one is mask proof. Obviously not, it's not completely mask proof or this would not have happened, but it does look like really good compared to some other foundations that I have worn with masks before. So yeah, I'm actually pretty impressed with that. So we're only about like midday right now. I'm gonna go and just finish up the rest of my day and then I'll be back at the end of the day to give you guys like kind of an update and what my thoughts are on the foundation. So I'll see you guys later. Girl, I am looking rough with this hair. So we're gonna go ahead and call it a day on the wear test for this foundation. I'm actually pretty impressed with how this foundation wore throughout the day, how it looks now. It still looks pretty good. So if you guys look right here, I do have like a line where the foundation kind of went off because I tend to sit like this or I, I touch my face a lot and I'm surprised that the foundation looks this good still. Obviously my lipstick is like almost completely gone but pretty impressed with Natasha Denona, not gonna lie. The eyeshadow still looks pretty good and the lipstick even after eating and drinking and stuff. But yeah, the foundation still looks really good even at the end of the day. It did not go into my smile lines which always happens to me with other foundations. So yeah, I think this foundation based on a one day wear test was really good. It lasted really nicely even with the mask. I'm gonna keep trying this out for you guys. I'm gonna try and start a new series on my channel where I come back on here and kind of like rank products that I've tried out and let you guys know if I'm still liking them or not. Because sometimes I like a product whenever I first try it and then the more I use it, I don't like it anymore or like vice versa. I won't like something and then I start liking it after using it more. So. Let me know if you guys are excited to see a series like that. But yeah, I feel bad saying it, but I think this foundation is actually really good. I love that it has skincare benefits. It has SPF in here. It does have really good ingredients with the vitamin C, the salicylic acid, the hyaluronic acid. I love all of those ingredients and those are all ingredients that really work for my skin. So I do think this is a really nice foundation. I love the serum foundation like idea. I think that's a great idea for a foundation. It really does look like a second skin. It is a medium coverage foundation. Obviously Obviously it looks like you're wearing a foundation, but it's not cakey. It definitely looks like a very natural foundation. It feels very lightweight on the skin. I don't feel like it's gonna move if I touch my face. My face feels very, very smooth, and I don't feel like it's really going to transfer anywhere, so it definitely is long-lasting. This is supposed to be a 24-hour foundation. Obviously, I'm not gonna wear this for 24 hours, but it definitely is long-lasting. I'm like really conflicted because I like the foundation, but I hate that they did the shade range the way they did because I know a lot of you guys are not gonna be able to get your shade in this foundation. So just keep that in mind. I really hope that Clinique will see everybody's comments and kind of take the feedback and create more shades in this foundation because it is really good, at least as far as like my first day trying it out. I think it looks really, really nice on the skin and I'm excited to see the skincare benefits of this. I can definitely see myself using this as like an everyday foundation. So yeah, as far as the formula, I would give it a thumbs up. As far as the shade range, definitely a thumbs down. That is ridiculous. So yeah, I'm gonna keep testing it out. I'll keep you guys updated on that. If you guys cannot get your shade in this foundation, I am so sorry. And I'm really hoping that Clinique does something about the shades in this foundation. So yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I will have this foundation linked in my description box below if you guys want to check it out. Let me know in the comments down below what other new products you guys want me to try out. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.